serotonin. Frontline, unresectable, metastatic, RAS mutated. Frontline, uh, what wh are you thinking about biologics, rationale for VEGF uh, inhibition? Well, the, this is a patient with a RAS mutation, so thus automatically they uh, uh, would not qualify for an EGFR inhibitor. Uh, do you wait until that comes back no. to make your biologic decision? No, I wouldn't because it's not going to change what I do in the first line. It just changes what, what is done in the later lines of, uh, of therapy. So the presence or absence of a RAS mutation doesn't really change what I do in the first line. Uh, it's, uh, he doesn't live in Germany. No. Well, Europe. Uh, you know, it's interesting. This is the first time we've ever really had an Atlantic battle yeah. uh, over what to do in this kind of patient. So. You know, and, and, and that, that, that battle is mostly in the RAS wild type. Of course, yeah, the, the RAS yeah. mutation, it's, uh, it's more straightforward. So, uh, you know, I so think it's... So fluoropyrimidine, oxyrerie or eerie based on the patient in front of you. Uh, you know, I typically, again, favor eerie, but, but ox is reasonable as well. Uh, so Fulfiri or Fulfox uh, plus Bevacizumab. You know, we, we, we love our Fulfox and Fulfiri. Has anyone here actually carried an infusion pump around their neck for, for 48 hours? I have not. No? no. You haven't? Mm -mm. You should do it on your, your run that I, we <laughs> gave money to. You should do that. <laughs> and just carry, we should carry pumps when we, because it's not easy. I mean, if anybody's done home medical care for themselves or a loved one, it's not, you know, we send people home with a lot of complex gear anyway. Um, they, they're tough. These people are tough out there. Uh, Tara, RAS wild type. Okay. I got it in my bank. I know it. It's back. For sure. Um, so in this patient, frontline, metastatic, unresectable, what do, what do you think here with biologics and EGFR therapy? So as I said before, I'm on the full theory train, but between panituzumab and cetuximab, they're interchangeable. Mm -hmm. And really, I think it goes down to just your own preference of which drug you prefer prefer to use and are more comfortable using, unless you're in, you know, Tennessee and you have these hypersensitivity reactions, but I'm in California and we don't have that. Um, panituzumab, you know, it's every two weeks, cetuximab is weekly, but a lot of us have been doing cetuximab every two weeks instead, so um, they're interchangeable. Um, an Australian sh study showed that, mm. so really it's preference. And are the RAS wild type patients that you would use an EGFR in front line, clearly you'd go in and say, I think you should have this one? Yes. And I usually just tell them it's fulfiry cetuximab. So, <laughs> and, but, but in terms of versus VEGF? Um, I prefer the cetuximab first line. Mm. I think you get better data. Well, actually, there is new data coming out mm. on Sunday. We have the abstract. We're going to talk and about that. And we will that, talk about but no, that. That's the point. So in the absence, before coming before into coming Chicago. Out, <laughs> I would always do uh, the cetuximab first line. I would do then the Avastin second line. Very good. Anybody got patients where coming into today that clearly a front line, you know, a, you know stroke, Valper, mm. all of those people, but are there others where there's no real comorbidity risk factors? Yeah, well, yeah. I think if you look at 804 or 5 and even the FIRE 3 trial, the FIRE 3 trial was powered for response, right. yeah. and everyone expected it to be more positive for that instead of survival. Uh, in the patient who clearly has a, a wild-type BRAF mutant tumor and is symptomatic, there still is a response advantage in both studies, 80405 and FIRE 3 for cetuximab up front. That's the group I typically offer it to. In patients with more indolent disease, bevacizumab tends to prolong PFS. So uh, we all want longer lives, better lives, and people who have asymptomatic disease, I'm more likely to use bevacizumab up front and then use it in second line and reserve the EGFR agent for third line therapy. For yeah, example. I mean, to set this discussion up, I was, you know, I was disappointed in FIRE3 and 80405. I mean, this was, these were the right people, the right drug, and we didn't see, you know, our, so is our biomarker not right? Are we not there yet? Um, or is it really not that powerful of a driving mutation? Anybody got, got thoughts? Could we enrich better? I mean, we're going to talk about how we might be able to. Well, I think, I mean, it, reality is 80405 took 10 years to, do. to, to finish. Well, but so, it kept changing, right? Cause, right, because yeah. we, we had to amend it accordingly based upon KRAS and then uh, additional on, RAS analysis, et cetera. And then the fact, I mean, we really don't have a lot of data regarding full fury because 70% of the doctors chose full fox. So I think we are, are a little bit limited, but I think it also is a big contrast to FIRE3 because FIRE3 also told you what you should provide to patients as second line. Yeah. Whereas 80405, because we're in the U.S., everybody has every single drug okay. available to them. So I don't think with the primary imprint overall survival, you're going to expect to see a big difference.